is of power because we are kings and our words matter. You don't think that you have anything more than what you've got on your body. Your flesh and bone and blood. That's all you got. And with that you try to work it out. But I am telling you that you are much more than just flesh and blood. You are anointed, empowered, favored and destined to succeed because the blessing of God is upon you. There'll be victory in the camp at the shower shut down. Every enemy will flee from the fire in his eyes. Every captive will be free in this year of Jubilee. When we hear the shout of El Shaddai, there'll be victory in the camp. At the shout of El Shaddai, every enemy will flee from the fire in his eyes. Every captive will be free in this year of Jubilee. When we hear the shout of El Shaddai, Galatians chapter 3 verse 7 onwards. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. How many of you here are sons of Abraham? It says if you are among those who are of faith, you are sons of Abraham. Not just if you are physical descendant of Abraham, but if you are of faith, you are considered sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Notice that. Those who are of faith are blessed. Everybody say those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Right along with Abraham, you're blessed. That's what it means. Then read verse 13 because it tells us how the blessing became ours. How come the blessing of Abraham that went down from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob and to, then to the people, uh, people of Israel and then all the way down to Jesus. Then after Jesus, how come it became possible for everyone in this whole earth to be blessed? How? Verse 13 tells us that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, 
For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now how the blessing of Abraham has come down to us is this, that Christ did something. That's how it came. came. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How? He redeemed us by hanging on the cross for us and taking our curse there for us so that the blessing may come upon us. What was the curse? In what way the people of the world lived under a curse? It appears here that everyone was under a curse and that Christ has come to redeem everyone from the curse. So what is the curse that everyone, every single human being was under that Christ came to redeem us from? What is that curse? It is called the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? What is the law? The law, it says, the Bible says, came with Moses. That means the law is the Ten Commandments because God gave the Ten Commandments through Moses. Now, when God gave the Ten Commandments, God said, he who does it, he shall live. If you do this, you shall live. That means if you do this, you'll be blessed. If you do this, you'll be all right. If you do this, then you'll have the blessings of God upon you. But the problem is, he says that, but he gave it in such a way, the Ten Commandments were designed in such a way to make everyone fail in doing that. That a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of Christians don't realize that. They try to do the Ten Commandments and use the Ten Commandments to qualify before God. But the Bible teaches very clearly in Romans that no man shall be justified by the law. That means if you came by the law, if you took the Ten Commandments and tried to live by it and try to justify yourself before God through the law, you will never ever be able to do it. No man will ever be able to do it. The Ten Commandments is designed so that every single human being that attempts to qualify himself through the law before God will fail. Then you may say, why did he then design it? <laughs> why would he then give us the Ten Commandments, say do it, and then make it in such a way that we can't do it? Well, that's where the whole Bible teaching rests. That one of the reasons that the Ten Commandments was given is to prove that we are sinners and that we are in need of a savior. Unless someone comes and saves us, we cannot be saved and that we are sinners. It has to be proven. How to prove that? People are not very easy in accepting the fact that they are sinners. So to prove that the law was given. The law was not given to justify you. The law was not given to make you qualified before God. It was not given so that you can do it and then come and say, Lord, I've done the Ten Commandments. How about blessing me? It was never given for that. It was given so that it can prove that you are a sinner and that you need a savior literally to rescue you, save you, deliver you from the sinful condition that you're in. So you come to the law, you try to do it and you're unable to do it and then you, reali you realize that you're a sinner but then you realize also that you're under a curse because you have transgressed God's law. You're a violator of God's law. You've not done what God has said. Therefore, the curses are upon you. Therefore, you can't be blessed. Therefore, you can't walk in the blessings of God. So that is why in the Old Covenant itself, in the Old Testament itself, there were not there was not just the law. God was gracious. See, there's not much difference between the old and the new covenant. The old is the shadow. The new is the reality. That's all. Basically, there's no difference. That's the shadow. This is the reality. In essence, it's the same. So in the old covenant also, only the law was not there. Because it cannot justify a man. Man must be justified before God. God wants to bless man. But he cannot bless him through obeyed obedience to the law because no man can obey the law. Therefore, there was not only the law, there was also the sacrifice. Ah, so man went to the law first. He tried the law. When he failed, then he came to the sacrifice. That's why the sacrifice was available. What is the sacrifice? That's Jesus. That's the Lamb of God. That is where the, the blood of the Lamb is shed. An animal takes your sin in your place and becomes your substitute. The man lays his hands upon that animal and all the man's sins is transferred thereby upon that animal symbolically. That's what it meant. 
and then they kill that lamb and the man looks at the lamb that dies and says my god i should have died but the lamb died for me it's my sin but the lamb took it it's my problem but the lamb carried it see in the old testament itself it was that way the law never justified it's only the sacrifice man could never come to god by 10 commandments say lord good news i got the 10 commandments downloaded and done already i knew it and i did it here i am 10 Hundred marks. Nobody ever came like that. Everybody went to the Ten Commandments. Everybody failed, and everybody turned up there to offer sacrifice. And they say, "I'm a sinner. Oh, Lamb of God, take away my sin." And that is how they were justified. That is how God blessed them under the old covenant. Hello. See how simple the story is. People get confused over these things. You know, oh, what is this sacrifice? It's Leviticus. They hate that book. You know. the old testament my god you know who will understand that you know it's very simple this is the story the story of salvation that's what it is all about so the curse of the law has to do with how every man is a transgressor according to the law and therefore he is under a curse and under the old testament itself the people of israel enjoyed blessings every day how by the sacrifices by jesus foreshadowed under the old covenant through the lamb that was sacrificed that is how they enjoyed the blessings that is they didn't enjoy the blessings because they did the commandments they enjoyed the blessings because of the grace of god that provided the lamb that's the story so under the new covenant it is no different how do you in galatians 3:13 that is how paul gets the revelation paul is not making this up he is not cooking this whole thing up when he said christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having been made curse for us when he said that he's got the revelation he knows what he's talking about he knows what the old testament teaches he knows the whole story he understands theology he understands the revelation he understands what has happened through the cross of calvary now the reality has come it is not just the lamb that foreshadowed christ it is reality now so he's preaching this he says christ has redeemed us what the lamb foreshadowed in the old testament christ has done it by hanging on a tree the lamb of god took away our sins and became curse for us so that we can be blessed so you understand the curse of the law has to do with transgressing the laws of god everyone is a transgressor via later of the laws of god no one by their by their own qualification no one qualifies for god's blessings everyone qualifies god for god's blessings by what jesus has done amen that's why don't be sitting there and thinking about how bad you were and what you know counting your you know all your demerits sit there thinking about what jesus has done because it is by the grace of god we enjoy the blessings of god all right now he did it so that the blessings may come not only the curse may be removed but the blessings may come what is the blessing the blessing of abraham everybody say the blessing of abraham not just any blessing the blessing of abraham Eh? I'm going to really be specific about it. The blessing of Abraham. I'm very specific about it. The blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham. I'm getting really excited about the blessing of Abraham. That's the blessing. I want to. I want to go into the Bible again and again and read the blessing of Abraham. I just want to know what this man had because that's exactly what Jesus came to give to me. The blessing of Abraham. So I want to know every little part of Abraham because I am Abraham. in blessing if you look at the blessing that's exactly what i have so i want to know everything about him all right now are you blessed or are you cursed i like that better <laughs> blessed now some people some christians believe yes i am blessed but i think there are some curses brother and you ask them how they say you know because one brother came and prayed and told me that i have these two curses from my father's side from my grandfather's from my father's side and then i have one curse from my mother's side this great grand uncle you know because of all that he was there's this one curse over there and then there is this other curse you know that somebody put on me 
So he's got a few curses he has counted down and he's got a revelation concerning these things. That he has come up with a list of the curses that I have. This, this is something that is going on in this world today. That is what I'm trying to deal with. I'm telling you, are you going to believe that guy or are you going to believe Galatians 3, 13 and 14? I've chosen to believe Galatians 3, 13 and 14 a long time ago. So, no matter how many people come and tell me, preachers come and tell me, or men and women come and tell me that I have a curse, I have decided that I will refuse to believe that I have a curse because God's word is greater than a thousand men's word. Now this is what I'm trying to impress upon people's hearts and minds today. This is what is so important today for us to realize because in order to walk in blessing, one of the reasons that people don't walk in blessing is this. Even though God has blessed them, even though Christ died, took the curse, gave the blessing, so many people, for so many people, blessing has not become a reality. There may be three reasons. Why is the lack of knowledge? They just don't know. You know, I heard somebody said the other day, brother, until I came here, I didn't know that I was blessed. I didn't know that God has ordained blessing for me, that God has prepared these blessings. You know, you're the person talking about blessing here. I never heard of this thing. See, people don't know. If you don't know, then you walk as an ordinary person. You walk in flesh and blood. You're no more than a just, a, just like anybody else. Uh, you know, you just go through life and all of its struggles and all of its problems just alone by yourself and try to battle it out with your strength and you don't think that you have anything more than what you've got on your body, your flesh and bone and blood. That's all you got. And with that, you try to work it out. But I am telling you that you are much more than just flesh and blood. You are anointed, empowered, favored, and destined to succeed because the blessing of God is upon you. Amen. That's the blessing. There's something upon you that's beyond what you see. There's something there upon you. You've got to understand this by revelation. See, that's why I'm preaching. You will never understand it any other way. I can't help you to believe it any other way. You've got to get a revelation of it. You've got this. There is a blessing upon you. And you can work out your problems and you can work out your difficulties by way of this blessing. With this blessing, you face your problems. With this blessing, you face your difficulties. And you win over all those things. Amen? So, the blessing is upon us. Curse is gone. What is curse? Curse is to, to be cursed is to be doomed or marked for destruction. I am not marked for destruction. I am marked to succeed. I'm assigned for success. I am destined for success. Everybody say, I'm destined for success. But the problem is, you got to walk in this by faith. You can't walk in this by feelings. You can't walk in this by feelings. You can't walk in this by what you see. You can't walk in this by what others say. That's the problem. A lot of people say, well, somebody said that I got a curse. See, you're walking not by faith. You're walking by what some others said. You're not walking by, by the word of God. You're walking by what one man says. You cannot walk in this blessing in any other way other than by faith. What is faith? Faith believes the word of God and acts upon the word of God. Faith says, if God says that he took my curse on the cross of Calvary and gave me the blessing of Abraham, then I'm going to call myself blessed. Well, what about this thing that I see? It doesn't look like a blessing. It looks like a curse. Well, I'm going to call myself blessed and this curse has to find its way out because I am blessed. I'm going to stand on faith and believe in the blessing so that even the circumstances of my life will change and reorder itself so that everything will look like blessing also. You see. So you've got to walk by faith. You cannot walk by sight. You've got to walk by faith. You've got to walk in victory by walking in faith. Now, a lot of people these days major on curses and that is why I have to deal with this because the whole Christian world seems to be in this mess sometimes <laughs> one part of this Christian world at least seems to be in this mess that they think that they've got some kind of curse they're majoring on curses they think oh brother maybe some curse is there some devil is there they're very devil conscious and curse conscious so every time they close their eyes they see devil every time they open their eyes they see devil you know 
one of my pastor friends, he was taken by another pastor to visit a family. You know, he was preaching in this place and this pa local pastor took him and said, well, let's go visit one of our families. So they went and visited and chatted with them and all that. And time came for prayer. So the local pastor said to the visiting pastor, why don't you pray? So this pastor, the visiting pastor is like me, you know, he just, he just closed his eyes and just, just, uh, just started praying and praising God and just offered thanks and, and just spoke a few words from the word of God and prayed with the word of God and closed it. And as soon as he finished, the local pastor said, what pastor? You simply prayed? What is this? And this guest pastor said, what's wrong? And the local pastor said, didn't you see anything? <laughs> and the guest pastor said, no. He said, brother, I saw two dark powers. As soon as we closed our eyes, I saw two dark powers. You didn't see it? And this pastor is like me, you know, this guest pastor. He said, why do you want to see the devil every time you want to close your eyes? He said, dear brother, learn to see God every time you close your eyes. <laughs> Learn to see God. Learn to feel God's presence every time you close your eyes. Don't see the devil. Don't, you know, ignore him even if he's there. So what? <laughs> ignore him. Forget about, you know, the devil's presence. Now, I say this with, with all seriousness because so many people are devil conscious. When they pray, they become devil conscious. You know, I have a preacher friend of mine, you know. These are all my friends, you know. So I, I'm not their enemy. Uh, but the thing is, I don't like some of their ways, you know. And, <laughs> and, and he's from the old times. And, and, and he, whenever he comes to the church, you know, he, he has a church and all that. When he starts the service, sometimes he can't get the service going. He just can't even do anything. He will stand there. And he will start his prayer and the starting itself, starting problem he's got. The problem is this. He'll close his eyes and immediately he starts battling with the devil. He starts throwing the devil one by one out. Say, you devil, you out. You devil, you go out. You devil, you get out. And he starts dealing with all these devils, you know, he feels that, that have come and occupied the church. So he's wanting to start the service and he's not able to start the service. And sometimes he'll just stop and say, you know, I can't worship today. The devil has got us bound up, brother. Let's all join together and pray because the devil is binding us today. The devil has got us all bound up today. I can't worship. I can't sing. I can't preach. Sometimes he'll stand up and open the Bible, get ready to preach. And then he will just stop there and say, I can't even preach because the devil, you know, the devil is binding me up. I, <laughs> I can't preach. And he will just close his eyes and he'll go around saying, Pope is here, Pope is here, Pope is here. He'll be driving the devil out. You know, he'll say, get out, devil. You get out, devil. Get out, devil. You get out, devil. He'll be, he'll be going through this whole ritual sometimes. Half the service consists of this. <laughs> now, when I was... <laughs> When I was young, I was very impressed. I said, my God, this man knows exactly where the devil is. I can't even see the devil. And this man can see. He must be somebody, I thought, you know. He's a real gifted man. He's got some spiritual gifts, I think. He knows where the devil is, you know. So I looked upon him as a great man of God. I said, my God, you know, he knows exactly where the devil is. He can tell when the devil went and when the devil came in. <laughs> and what the devil is doing and all that, you know. He knows exactly what's happening, so... You know, I just looked upon him with awe. I said, my God, you know, he, this man is very aware of the devil, you know. He knows what's happening. He knows the spiritual realm and what's happening in the spiritual realm and so on, you know. But then when I got into the word, I began to understand some things. I began to, you know, I, you know in the early days, I used to think like that also. And I used to kind of, you know, make sure that all the devils went out first, you know. Made sure I threw all the devils out first and made sure I bound all them up and, and, and tied them up and put them in a corner before I started the service and, and so on. I try to feel, you know, some kind of, you know, is the devil there or not? Is he working? Can I go ahead? Uh, am I ready to start? You know, that's the kind of thing that I, uh, that I used to feel, you know. But then, <laughs> 
Some people know what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> you've been in the same old thing. But then I got into the word. And my whole thing changed, you know. I began to realize when I came into the service, I began to realize that I'm in God's presence. I became more conscious of God than the devil. I began to cease to be devil conscious. I ceased to worry about where the devil is and what he is doing and, and so be, be so preoccupied with what the devil is doing. And I began more to be immediately conscious of God's presence, God's glory, God's immediate presence in that place. So I don't do it. You know, that's why when I come, I just give thanks to God. I just open the service beautifully. I just say, Lord, I thank you because you are here. You're the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I don't care if the devil is here. Let him, you know, if he's there, you know, he better be scared. <laughs> he can't do nothing. He can't bind me up. He can't stop me from preaching. He can't stop me from worshiping. He can't stop me from singing. So I'm not going to stand there and cooperate with him saying, oh, I think my, the devil is binding me up. I can't sing right now. My voice is not working because the devil is binding me. I can't sing because the devil is hindering me. I can't preach because the devil is in the way. Get him out of the way. Why do you want to give him so much credit? Why do you want to pay so much attention to him? Why do you want to glorify him in the midst of the congregation so much? Why? He wants you to believe that he can stop you from preaching. He can stop you from worshiping. He wants you to believe that he can stop you from doing this and that. And you're now cooperating with him. Don't cooperate with him. He cannot stop you. He is bound. He is finished. He is under your feet. And you've got authority over the devil. So stand as a man of authority. Let him take note that a person of authority has come on the scene. friend, oh such a friend, and he made my heart his own. God himself is with me, and I know I'm never alone. I know all my tomorrows will be better than all my hopes. We've got love, grace, peace, and power, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We've got love, my God is never wrong, and he makes stand for me. we got grace. It blew apart my chains and set the sinner free. It's like a river and you'll never run it dry. We got power over fear and death and hearts filled up with joy. The Holy Spirit fills me up and I need him every day. Fire, faith and confidence and knowing what to say. I gave my heart and one who loves me most We've got love, grace, peace and power And joy in the Holy Ghost we got love, my God is never wrong yeah, He may stand for me we got grace It blew apart my chains And set the sinner free It's like a river and you never